going on, everyone? We got Brandon from Investment Joy. Howdy, howdy. So we got a few questions on money and mindset from the man himself, and with that, we'll get straight into it. So with that, the first question is, what does money mean to you, Brandon? So money is like, from a high level perspective, like the high level thought, your money is just a um, capsule or an embodiment of time and effort that you've put into something. It's just, you know, you spend time and effort for pictures of dead presidents on dollar bills. But the thing is like, for me, it's, it's just the value that you're bringing to somebody else. A lot of people I run into, they, they try and they build value to other people and they're not compensated very well. Other people bring great value to other people and then they are um, compensated extremely well. So that's kind of like a real quick rundown of to what money means to me. So then people, you can take the value that you build for other people and then you can allocate it to whatever you want. For me, it means that I, I got to buy a golf cart for my kids so we can drive around in the yard and my 13-year-old and 10-year-old can learn how to drive. They have a blast doing that. It means that we have heat in my house. It means we have a roof over our head. Money to me also means that I'm not having a super nice car at this point. I, drive a, I still drive my 15-year-old Ford Expedition. Like at some point, I'm going to get something nicer. But so for my, me, money is not this thing to just hopefully buy things. It's you know, I, it's things that I can allocate value to. Hopefully that makes sense. But you know, it's just it's one of those things. That's where I choose to use it. I can try to use it wisely. I can try. I can use it to bless people. I can use it to destroy people. I can do whatever I want to with it. And P, the thing that concerns me about money is so people spend their whole entire life and then they misallocate it. Um, I don't know if I've ever talked about this before, but my wife has family members that are missionaries. And they go around the world and they build like orphanages and they've built libraries and they've built these really great things um, in uh, Papua New Guinea, the Middle East, Africa. And it's one of those things, it's, how much money does that cost? Because I'm a money and numbers guy. How much does that cost? And some of the people, they spend years fundraising so they can build one orphanage overseas. I've got a fit person in my wife's family and he is a housing developer. He's pretty wealthy, he owns a bunch of rentals. And he, if he decides he wants to go build an orphanage in Papua New Guinea or a library, or he built a college, I think, recently, um, he just got on an airplane and did it. And I've, I've said to myself for, you know, ever since I got married, I'm like, that's, the, that's somebody that I need to be. I need to be able to wisely take these assets, this money, this encapsulation of time and value, and put it in things that I really want to do, that I, you know, bring value to other people in the way that I want them to have value. So. That's great. That's great. That being said, from a more tangible financial perspective, how have you come to be essentially, how have you made your millions? Okay, sure. So like um, I do the social media thing and we're doing very, very well. Um, I, I don't know that I've made millions yet off social media. I'm sure I will very soon. Um, but my, my millions in assets, my millions in value, it's all been primarily real estate. Um, I, prob I have over probably a million in my laundromats and car washes, just a net equity and value. But the, the rest of it's all from real estate. And it's mostly from buying low end housing, cheaper housing, fixing it up, making it more valuable. I just make deals with people. We buy, I buy houses that people don't want to, or I buy houses that people don't want to fix or they don't think they can be fixed. And I have a pretty decent contractor crew. They go in, they renovate the real estate. And for the most part, most of what I've bought at this point has quadrupled in value. I'm in central Southern Ohio and mar our market in general has probably increased 75% in value. So our median went from 150,000 to like 225. So there's been definitely an uptick in value of real estate, but the equity that I've made was buying a house for 25,000, putting 25 in it. So I got 50K in the rental. It was worth 100, now it's worth 175. And I've done that and the equity spread went from $100,000 to, um, I'm trying to do the math real quick in my head, uh, 125K. So from, from 50K in equity to 125K in equity, just off the, the uh, some appreciation, not crazy appreciation like you see on the West Coast, but it's really great for Ohio. And I've just been able to make that spread across 130 rentals. So that's, that. I did my, um, I did all my assets recently. I've got about $10 million in total assets. Um, my net equity position at a fire sale, if I had to auction off all of my assets tomorrow would probably be in the $4 million range, which for me is pretty good. Um, my businesses are more debt loaded than um, my real estate is. So I, but I, and I imagine if we had to fire sell those, they wouldn't go for really great 
equity multiple. Like we won't make tons of equity off of them, but it's some of these values that I have on my fire sale spreadsheet, I value them at like $100,000 and we're, um, one I got valued on my spreadsheet at 75K and we're, uh, the agent just called me and we're listing it for 155. So, so it's like, you know, I, I'm pretty aggressive on my pricing, not to my favor, just in case something terrible happens to me. So that's, that's kind of how I made my money, where it's segmented and how it looks. So I can be alone, you can be alone, we can achieve success. But sure. the question is from where you are and where you came from, what are a couple of maybe supportive elements whichever you attribute your success yeah. or growth to, what would those be like? So like, if you're not familiar with my story, my, one of the best things that's helped me is I started getting around good people. When I grew up, I, I talk about, about um, Dave a lot. He worked at a TV factory. He was like the, the he made the most money out of anybody. And he was like 40, $45,000 a year. And that was the best. Some guy working at a TV factory. Everybody else I knew was just dirt broke. Um, most of the people declared, I knew were declaring bankruptcy on a regular basis. Everybody lived very similar to my family, just you weren't very rich. Um, then when I got my real estate license at 21, I started working with and around people that weren't chronically broke. Yeah, there were broke people that were in, involved in real estate, but it wasn't near as many people. And I remember meeting two people that just really were nuts to me. One's a guy named Joe. Joe was a truck driver, just like my dad was, but he was worth probably millions of dollars at that point. He showed me his bank account statement or his checkbook. He had $359,000 in his bank so he could go invest in real estate. I was like, Holy crap, you had the same job as, as my dad. How did you do it? Well, I invest in real estate. Like, wow, okay. Um, another guy, I'm trying to think his name was Bill. He was a janitor for a hospital and he came in, wanted to buy a house for cash. He showed me he had 200 and some thousand dollars cash in a bank account. And he bought this really nice house with a pool with, with cash. And I'm like, how did you do it? He said, well, I bought real estate around the hospital. And, and when I was done doing my janitor work, I would go and work on my houses in the evenings when I didn't have anything else to do. And over fi a five year period, I took these dumpy houses. I had no money in them. And I sold them and we just sold them for three hundred some thousand dollars up near the Hill Hospital. And I'm like, holy freaking crap. So here I am, a janitor that did it and a truck driver that did it. These people are, and like sitting around them, they weren't much smarter or any smarter really than the people that I knew. The difference was they made a choice, a very conscientious choice to invest in something. And the people that I knew growing up, other than my, other than Dave that worked at the, 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 the TV factory, no one I knew invested. Like, no one talked about it, no one knew how to do it. It was just like, a lot of people I ran into, a lot of stock, the stock market is a scam. How do you know that's like gambling? How do you know that it's gambling? Well, it just is. Because your cousin lost $1,000 betting on Apple stock. Like, you bet on Apple stock? Did it go to nothing? Well, no, it went down value and he sold it. Well, and then we're talking about the 90s. Can you imagine what would have happened if you would have bought $1,000 worth of Apple stock in the late 80s, early 90s and would have had it today? Like, it would have been, light. it's life-changing money. Yeah. Uh, World-changing money for a lot of people. So it's like, their, their lack of intelligence when it came to money and finance just kept these people broke and they're st the, unfortunately as much as I love those, love those people they're still broke um, now I've got a friend named Caleb that I used to go to church with forever ago and he knew all the same people I do he's like he's investing in stocks and he watches my videos he's like can you, I can't believe everybody we knew growing up ran was broke it's like it's weird isn't it? he's like it's weird so that's that's like my big takeaway is get around good people invest in yourself in, t in terms of knowledge learn what you can because the information is all out there you just got to get motivated and go out and actually do it. Fair. That's great. So from beginning to now, have you ever had any financial milestones or some type of milestones that says, hey, I'm Brandon and I've made progress and I'm happy. And over time, how has your mindset changed from the beginning to now? And what do you see next? Sure. Yeah. So like my change, my mindset has changed so much in the past five years because my plan was just to keep buying single family houses, keep fixing them up, have 500 of them. And as time's gone on, I've realized that because I felt like I could handle everything myself, I've had I've come to the realization as I've hit milestones of like 100 rentals, a million subscribers, five million subscribers, um, these different milestones is I need to outsource more. And it's like every time I hit a milestone, I know that I need to hire more people. I need to outsource more people. It's been super difficult for me because then I real I'm like I have another mouth to feed. I have another family that I have to support. And the real the reality of it has been like 
No, you've got to outsource this to somebody that can do the job. If they don't do the job, then you do somebody else. You, you're not feeding their mouth. They're responsible for themselves. And as a finance creator, I know that's true. I know that you are the one that's going to make the trade. It doesn't matter your boss. It doesn't matter your living situation. But I feel so responsible for the people I hire. Um, I, I've, I've hired several, several, several. Like, I probably got a dozen people working for me now on social media. And it's as the situation of we started hiring people, and everybody that works for me other than one kid um, is on a commission basis. I don't, they're all 1099 contractors. They're not on salary. They work for what they're worth. My, I, I have a, a friend that just got out of jail. He came on board working for me. I did not hire him. The people involved hired him. I just gave him a list of names of people I thought were great. Um, wrote a check for two weeks worth of work to a friend for $9,000. I was like, oh, this is awesome. Because he made me way more than $9,000 Mike, in investment joy. I had another guy I've known for three years now. I was like, he's had 20 years of sales experience, 20 years of, of commission-based sales, all this different stuff. I was like, we're hiring him. I wrote him a check over a one month span of 120 or 150 bucks. And we had to let him go. I'm like, I've come to the realization, I cannot be the one to do the hiring and firing. I've got to put systems in place, let those systems work out, let people sit over those systems. And then as they handle it, um, I'm going to be able to continue and scale and grow this business. And, you know, as, the, as time goes on, I just want to continue to scale. I want to get into some property development, some syndications, um, and continue to grow my social media business as well because it helps support everything else. Very nice. Any final words? No, not really. I'm just excited to be on here. And nice meeting you again for the second year at FinCon. And yeah. glad we got to do a video together. It's pretty cool. True that. All right. Cool. Thank you, Brandon.